First of all, Dr. Carlos, you are an absolute inspiration. I'm sure I speak for everyone here when I say that. Dave, you're all right. Uh, <laughs> now, nothing below. I've known this cat for 10 years. So, uh, anyway. But I wonder, I got a couple questions for you. One is, I wish if you could actually um, speak a little bit about Peter Norman, the, the silver medal, uh, silver medalist who stood up there. Because he's in that picture. He's in all of them. But he's always just sort of standing there and he looks like just sort of part of the scenery in that iconic photograph. And I know that, I know there's a lot more to it than that. I wish you could speak to that because it seems to be a great story of actually cross-racial solidarity. Peter Norman. How could I describe Peter Norman? I was to say that Peter Norman is my brother from another mother. <laughs> and on a serious note, when you say you have a commitment, you have a total commitment. I doubt Peter Norman any day, morning, noon, and night, just based on the character and the moral character of this individual. Now, when we went to Mexico City, it's almost like the God that I believe in, he told everybody, he said, I'm not concerned about y'all doing this job, I'm gonna do this job myself. And I always say he gathered the beaches of the world together, reached down in the sands of these beaches, and he pulled out three grains of sand. One, bam, Tommy Smith. <laughs> Two, bam, Peter Norman. Three, bam, John Carlos. Now, anybody else would have went up there in a di different complexion, you know, an exterior about color, skin color. They might have got there and said, no, nah, man, I'm not with that. You can't do that on the victory stand with me. I'm not going to get on that stand with you. God knew what he was doing because he picked the right man. He picked the man that was in a situation pretty much like South Africa. Australia was very parallel to South Africa in terms of their annex in terms of how they dealt with people of color. Now, when we decided that we were going to do something, Mr. Smith and I, and I went to Peter Norman after we, Mr. Smith and I decided what we were going to do, I said to Peter, I said, do you believe in human rights? And he put his little British accent on, his Australian accent, and said, blame me, of course I believe in human rights. <laughs> my mom and dad are Salvation Army workers all my life. I said, Pete, would you like to wear the Olympic project for human rights button? He said, if sure, he reached for mine, I had to smack him on his hand, you can't get this one. <laughs> but I'll get you one. And I got one by four rowers, white kids from Harvard University that was supporting us. Look pretty much like you guys right here. They supported us despite the government cracking down on them, despite them coming at them telling them you were with the wrong group the whole nine yards. Well, they threw me a button down. I put it on Peter's sweatsuit before we went out. Now, mind you, if you was to ever see the picture, you see Mr. Smith with his hand forward, you see mine kind of cocked, and you see Mr. Norman standing in attention, straight, straight up and down. Didn't disrespect no flag, his flag, nor our flag. But when all was said and done, we came home after the games, and they decided we didn't like what you guys did here in the United States. Well, let's go on this side of the town and whip up on John Collins. Let's kick his ass until we just get tired. We get tired, we can go on the other side of town and find Mr. Smith, and let's kick his ass too. And they back and forth for 40 some odd years, that's what they did with us. Well, imagine Peter Norman, as I said, he in a racist society in Australia at that particular time, he goes home. There's no trade-off on Peter Norman. They kicked his butt 24-7, 365 days a year. They disrespected him based on the fact that he was the number one sprinter in the history of that nation. When they had the Olympic Games there in 2000, they didn't even invite him to light the torch or to walk across the field. No acknowledgement whatsoever, merely because he put a button on his jacket and said, I believe in human rights, and I stand with these men that's standing up for human rights. Now, at the same time, they fired him from his job. They sent him into alcoholism. They gave him nervous breakdowns. They, they embarrassed his family, his kids, everybody that was associated with him. But you know, Peter Norman never backed away from us. He never flinched. He never denounced what he stood for. He never did anything but say, I'm a man and I stand behind my beliefs. That's why I tell you when I came in, there's no part way, there's no partial way in this game. Either you committed to do your deeds in his life, or you're not committed. Well, Peter Norman was committed to the end. When he died, 
I remember they called me on the phone and told me, say, man, Peter's gone. My attitude was gone where? It's gone to God. Well, I didn't have no money in my pockets, but I did have that desire that if I had to start walking to get there, I was starting that night. Because Peter Norman was a man's man. No if and buts about it. When Peter had the statue at San Jose State, they built these 23 foot statues. And when they called me and told me, said, John, they're putting the statues up, and you and Tommy look good. And I said, well, me and Tommy look good. What do you mean, me and Tommy look good? He said, well, maybe you want to come down to San Jose and check it out. <laughs> well, he's on down to San Jose, and I look and I see that they have two statues there, but they don't have a third statue. What was happening with Peter Norman? How come Peter's not there? Well, you know, the students to raise this money for the statue. You and Tommy are graduates of San Jose State. The statues are for you guys. No, if Peter is not going to be there, take my statue down, because that wasn't the game plan. Peter was there as much as I was there. So then they said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, John. Uh, it wasn't that we didn't want to put Peter up. Peter didn't want to be up. What? So let's go on down to the principals of the president's office. Let's get up. Uh, Mr. Cassidy, I need you to do me a favor. Pick your phone up and call Australia. Dial this number. Lo and behold, Peter picks up the phone. Hey, man, it's Carlos. What's going on? Man, what's this I hear about you don't want your statue up? You turned it away from me. And he laughed and gave me that big B for you blame the Americans. <laughs> and then he says, no, nah, John. He said, that's not nowhere near the truth. And here's the man that I remember. He said, look, man, I didn't go to Mexico City Olympics and do what you did because this was your country. He said, I understand what you was doing. He said, but it wasn't impress it upon me to have to do that because I didn't live in America. He said, but I understood what you were standing for based on what I experienced in Australia. He said, I didn't put a black glove on my fist. All I did was put a button on the show. I support you. He said, I felt like it was only fair for me not to be have a statue there, but to have a vacant platform. He said, you want to put a plaque up to acknowledge me? Fine. He said, but that platform is for anybody across this world that comes to San Jose State and want to stand up for justice and equality for humanity. That's their place to stand. Now, I know most people on this planet Earth would have had such an ego where they would have never denounced having a statue put up there. <laughs> but Peter Norman was a man's man. And when I say I would give my life for him, I would give my life for him and his kids right now. Yeah. To do teach-ins like this. They stand on that silver medal thing, point right next to statues of Tommy Smith and John Carlin.